Hey there, Eric back again, your learning futurist. Well, they have arrived. The avatars have debuted in a mixed reality concert in London. And this is a great example of mixing live music with recorded music, uh, live performances with digital contents, because this is actual performance from the ABBA pop stars themselves, but using de-aged digital twins presented on the stage as avatars or holograms or mixed reality projections, whatever you want to call it. We're going to get into this and how this is kind of telling of the future of a lot of different forms of entertainment and education because this is nothing new. It's been around for a long, long time using this type of uh, entertainment as, as illusion and holograms. And people like me have been starting to use it in classrooms, online education, and mixed reality and different forms of uh, informal learning environments. So we're going to talk about the avatars and what it means for the future of mixed reality and entertainment and education. Coming right up. All right, so the avatars, uh, as they're affectionately called, it's a great <laughs> pun and name, uh, I enjoy that very much, um, is a concert uh, that is was unveiled this week uh, in London, and it's the actual ABBA performers that haven't put on an album in 40 years, some new music, but it's being played on stage by de-aged avatars, avatars. And they're using a whole wide range of technologies, immersive technologies, to mix live music, recorded music, live performances, and digitized, captured, motion captured performances, all mixed together in a singular event uh, concert online. And that uh, came out just this week from uh, me recording this video. But uh, to think back when I first kind of I came, became aware of this idea was in a 1990s anime called Macross Plus, which is a kind of a reiteration of the old Robotech series uh, in the 1980s. And in this series, there was a uh, virtual idol. Uh, her name was Sharon Apple, and uh, she was the biggest pop star in the universe in this series, but she wasn't really a person. She was an um, artificially generated uh, construct that created music and did concerts and it was came in the form of holograms. So a digital uh, music idol uh, was this kind of idea from Macross Plus that came out. But now we're actually realizing a lot of this, but it's blending. It's a little bit different because now we're using real music with recorded people. And you can see that this uh, if you've ever seen that Sharon Apple video or that Macross Plus, this this thing that just happened in London is very reminiscent of that vision that uh, that was put forth in the Sharon Apple scenario in those animes. And so, you see what we're seeing on stage here are holograms uh, that have been motion captured from by performances from the real uh, ABBA superstars, and they're being displayed on stage through a variety of different uh, mediums, projection, uh, large screen uh, TVs, and other kind of displays. And so I'd like to dig into a little bit about how this is done uh, technically, and also uh, some of the ways that it's being used, perhaps in some of my projects, and other projects moving forward in entertainment and education. Right, so motion capture. Uh, many of you are probably already aware it's been a popular way to capture the motion of people and actors and make digital forms of them. I think one of the biggest place times we saw this happen was in the Avatar, first Avatar film, uh, much long ago. So you, you have cameras in front of your face that capture the motion of your face and your facial expressions, and then we have all these... Um, dots on the body that are tracked by cameras in different locations and then all that data is then put into a computer and then your movements your body movements are then put onto um, digital copies of you a digital twin perhaps and this idea of digital twins is going to be very important even more and more moving towards the future and so um, 
a lot like what's happened in a lot of movies recently where they take an actor and de-age them with um, now with artificial intelligence actually you can do this almost automatically through algorithms but uh, it's also done through a deep fake type situation too where you take a bunch of photographs and video of a person from when they were young and then mesh that to the motion that's been captured on your face from before. So there's a lot of different ways to do this now, this de this de-aging, but we've seen it in perhaps The Mandalorian with a young Luke Skywalker and other films as well. Uh, the remake of Tron comes to mind as well. But these are actually de-aged avatars. They, they use this motion capture and they actually perform in a motion capture studio. So they're in a wearing these contraptions and they're getting film from every angle and it's capturing their motion, it's capturing their voices. Uh, uh, perhaps not their voice in this situation though, but they're, they're performing it physically and then it's being put on the stage in their form of their de-aged avatar. So it's them moving, it's them de-aged, but it's holographic projections that are on stage and not the actual people themselves. They actually had to build an entire arena just for this purpose because when we're starting to mix realities you need to be able to map out the environment exactly make a digital copy of it and therefore and then you start to be able to put that construct inside of a computer and then put the digital contents into it so to mix the real and the digital a lot of times you need to take in a lot of data i talk about that a lot in a lot of my videos like for example google taking lidar data of all around the world and now they could have a Google VR experience where you can actually hop in and kind of walk around some of these places now. Very similar, right? So <clears throat> we saw this, this is not a new thing, right? Pepper's Ghost um, is not even the first instance I've researched about this kind of entertainment where holograms have been used uh, on stage or in storytelling. Um, this is a very simple thing. You've, you've probably experienced this as well. If you've ever looked at a window and seen some strange thing where you, you're seeing a reflection of you or somebody behind you, but it's actually on the other side of the glass and you see both of them together and that combination makes a weird kind of uh, combination of what's behind you and what's in front of you. And so that's actually happened to me. I remember being a kid and one of my friends coming outside my window at night and he had a white shirt on he was waving his hands up and down and he perfectly was transposed to look like he was behind me standing behind me in my room and I looked behind me and no one's there and I gulped because then I looked forward again and I saw somebody that appeared to be behind me and then of course he came to the glass and booed me and then I jumped out of my chair but this is essentially what's happening here that's they're using projection they're using uh, these digital avatars and projecting them on the stage, perhaps not li like this, because perhaps you've also been aware, this is a fun little project if you'd like to do with, your, if you have perhaps a middle school, high school, middle, even uh, elementary school students, you can make your own holograms with some plastic and a sort of mobile device screen where you project the images on either side of this glass at, at 45 degree angles, and you can make it look like there is a um, an object in 3D inside of this glass, right? It kind of looks like this, right? So as long as you have that 45 degree angle, the image is coming up from the bottom and you are seeing both what's inside and what's not there actually uh, in reality. So just playing with light in many situations. But this is not a, how I think they're doing it in the situation what you're seeing up here. Um, I've been looking at a lot of uh, video that's come out of the ABBA Voyage concert, especially the first day, because I'm very curious to know exactly how they're uh, doing this. But it looks to me like they're using perhaps some transparent displays, like maybe some glasses put up through the stage, and they're actually just showing the that 3D avatar. It's an actual 3D avatar, but it's only a 2D image, I think, that's represented here. I can see, tell a little bit here that... Um, Bjorn is a little bit uh, transfixed. He's transposed. He's not looking like we're seeing that angle from him. So if you, I think if you even went further to the left or right here in this case, uh, he would look even more like you were looking at a flat surface, like a sprite 
if you were in a virtual environment uh, in old, old video games. Not quite sure though, but <clears throat> I think this is something like this. These are, have been available for the last five to 10 years. They're transparent displays. And I've actually looked into my own kind of mixed reality situations using something like this. I have a couple of designs that I haven't put to work yet, but I have made digital twins of my office, my, uh, some classrooms at our university. And I've been experimenting with actually, so for example, that's a, di that's a digital avatar walking around on my physical desk. Uh, and that when, the, if you're in that virtual space, they actually see me as a real person in that virtual environment. It's been experimenting with this in for classrooms, for educational design, for entertainment. And you can see a lot of that in my Together Learning website um, and some of these environments that I've already made. Uh, for example, the Security Council Chamber. I made a digital twin of the UN Security Council Chamber, and we've been doing research and training young students in the future of leadership, putting them in the shoes in this actual digital twin and giving them scenarios in uh, world diplomacy. Yasaka Shrine is a place that we've been training tourism students here in Kyoto, Japan, because they can't travel right now in the pandemic. So they've been kind of walking around and practicing giving virtual tours in virtual reality. And then the studio, which you just saw, is actually my desk that I'm sitting at right now made a digital version of it, scaled it up, and so you can actually come and stand on my desk in its digital twin. And we've been playing around with a lot of different things uh, around this. Here's an, a sample of one of these right now. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the screen inside of virtual space, and then it's doubled up, so you can see a lot of things that are happening around here as well. So I'll just walk around. This is an actual um, inside view of that digital twin of the UN Security Council chamber. There's a couple of research papers I have written on this that you can look up if you're interested in that as well. All right, <clears throat> to go back to uh, the avatars and w what I think might be happening with, with this in the future is a lot of different things, right? One great thing about the avatars is that the ABBA people themselves have taken ownership of their digital twins. Usually this... And what we've seen in the past, as far as entertainment goes, is that the estate wants to have a new revenue stream or keep that concert or that, that talent alive and going in concert form, whether it be digitally in, on the internet with some video or actually on stage. Tupac Shakur, Michael Jackson, and a couple of other people have been uh, artists have been represented on stage in their holographic form. And, but that's usually controlled by the estate. Um, by other people looking to make new things. But the, the ABBA stars have actually done this. They're the first that I can think of that have actually taken control uh, as far as musicians goes. Um, there's actors that have taken control of their virtual likeness already as well. Keanu Reeves comes to mind for the Matrix films. But um, they've taken control of their digital twins and their likeness in this fashion, in this use case, and therefore, they have a say in how it's done. They get to put in their efforts. They even get to motion control how these, these things go on on the stage. So I'm actually very excited that this kind of experience might be brought to other places, other be able to go on the road perhaps in the future. But that's yet to be seen because I expect this technology is very much in place and highly calibrated to that specific arena. So uh, right now, the show is set to go on for a year. Uh, it could go up to five years, uh, depending on how well it does in this first year, but um, definitely uh, something to behold, especially if you're curious about mixed reality and how it's going to be used in entertainment moving towards the future. So what do you think? You like the idea of the avatar? Uh, certainly a good IP uh, to do this on for example that's why pokemon go is so popular is because it was resonant with a certain age group so now abba can be enjoyed as they were in the 70s by a whole new generation all right that's it for now we'll see you again in the next one bye bye <laughs>